Hi, it's Tom here from Augment Automotive. Just a video today to show you some of the features of our 3D Tuner app. This is um, the app we use to data log and tune and modify the maps in the Orgtronic ECU. So, pretty critical tool. And so, I'm going to talk you through some of the features and how it works. Um, so, at the moment, we've got an Orgtronic ECU running on our simulator, uh, connected to the laptop via our Bluetooth connection. And um, you can see in the top right here, we're happily sending data to and from the ECU. Uh, you can see that from the flashing icon on the top right. Uh, <coughs> whenever you're connected to an Ultronic ECU through 3D Tuner, you've got data logging. So it's continually um, saving all the data from the ECU uh, to disk. Um, you can find those files within the 3D Tuner folder in the log directory. So, um, basic... Um, basic menu layout in the top left so you've got file save load save orgamel and logo orgamel and equip button and uh, now these save and load buttons are means to save the map files within the ECU to the laptop's hard disk and the reason there's um, a save button and a load button and then a save orgamel and load orgamel is because there's two formats uh, you can save uh, electronic maps in one's in like a raw binary format and the other one's in a text format so um, yeah, um, <clears throat> you can also um, you know load in the maps. You know you get a little menu. So once you've saved it, you can um, email it or get get an email from us with a map and send them and modify them and save them and load them at your will. So you can really have as many maps as you want. You know hundreds, thousands, um, and you can just load them into the ECU with one click. So that a uh, bit about the saving and loading. Um, now, within the ECU itself, there are multiple maps. Um, so if you hit map selection here, you can see the different uh, tunable maps within the ECU. So fuel ignition, fuel air temperature, coolant temperature compensation maps, um, cranking fuel time, cranking ignition, startup fuel enrichment, how long the startup fuel enrichment lasts, transient settings, a bunch of ignition settings, air temperature, coolant temperature sensor calibrations, um, so all of these represent either a three-dimensional map, like the fuel, fuel map and the ignition map, or a two-dimensional map. So, for example, like the fuel air temperature compensation is just a two-dimensional map. That, for example, this lets you add or remove fuel based on the air temperature. Um, so you can access any of these maps through here. Um, they're all similar in format, so for the 3D maps, you've got the option to rotate and view the map from different angles. So if you hold down the right mouse button, you can move around and you can um, change the angle. With the I and O keys, you can zoom in and out. And if you hold down tab, you can pan around. So you can get the uh, view on the uh, map from all sorts of different angles. Now you see the little red sort of cylinder. That's the sort of marker of where the ECU is in its current operation. So on our simulator at the moment, it's going to change the engine speed. And you can see that move around to the different sites. And... I can also change the manifold pressure, so you can see how the um, the ECU is is taking the values from the current map. So this is where it gets its fuel injector pulse width from. And so at the moment we can see it's going to get its pulse width pretty much from this this value here, which is 5.5 milliseconds. Um, you see, I'm just making that text smaller and larger. So whenever I click on one of these points, it gives me the value of that point, and I press M and N to make that text bigger or smaller. I can also drag and select multiple points at once and see what the values are. I can select the whole map like that. Now, um, whenever you're modifying um, you know, the values in a 3D map like this, um, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can modify a single point and press the up and down keys, You know, tap it to go up and tap it to go down. Uh, that goes up and down one increment. Press. You can also use the Q and A keys, which uh, Q gives it 5% in the upwards direction, A gives it 5% in the downwards direction, so you can make quicker, uh, more coarse changes to that value. So say I'm on the dyno or whatever, and I, I want to tune a certain load site, so I'm just going to move the simulator to this load site here. So, for instance, I might be monitoring the air-fuel ratio on this car, holding it on the dyno and I hit Q and I add some fuel and I check that it gets richer or take some fuel out and see that it gets leaner to the point where I get the mixture I want. 
if I'm just messing around with the map and I know, for example, I don't know, maybe I've dropped the fuel pressure and I just want to add a load of fuel, I can drag across the whole map and I can press Q and A just like I can with a single point. I can press up and down and we will get more fuel across the whole map. So that's a brief introduction to how you sort of start modifying the maps here. Um, we've also got in the software a little command window. So um, if I select one or more points, I can hit the C key and this gives us a little command. Um, I can do a few things in here. It's fully documented in the manual, but for example, I can say equals uh, 10 and that will set all the values to 10. Um, I can say um, times 1.1, which will times them all by 1.1 or I can divide by 1.3 and so forth. So I can, I can do some batch operations that are sort of mathematical operators. Um, I can also tell it using the L, the L letter to take the values from the points to the left. Um, I can also use um, I, which will tell it to interpolate from the previous two points. So these two points here were used to interpolate a straight line all the way along these points. So there's quite a few little things you can do to make your mapping a bit quicker. And um, so one other note, there's a couple of things while you're tuning. There's a, an auto select mode, so that will automatically select the nearest point on the map. So if you're on the dyno, you haven't got to be clicking you know, each point individually. It'll automatically select whichever one's nearest, and then you can just modify it up and down. And that will change your air fuel ratio. Um, and then one of the other important things is um, the grid manipulation. So if you want to change the speed or low sites, you hit grid manipulation and you can move those around. Um, sometimes it can be a little tricky just to get them dead on, um, but you usually get there. Um, you can also edit these values in an orgml file uh, and edit them precisely. So um, another thing to notice is the tuning. If you've got that off, then you can't change any of the values. So. You can hit that if you just want to monitor, but you don't want to risk actually making a change. Um, so that's most of the features of the 3D mapping, and that applies to the ignition as well. So if this is an ignition map here, um, sort of same features apply. Um, we've got a, an orthographic view here, which lets you see a bit more easily like which point you're on. So when you're on the dyno, you can easily um, identify exactly that you're on a particular point for tuning. So that's quite useful. Now, um, for a 2D map, it's, it's, it's quite similar. You've got the red line that shows where you are. Um, uh, auto select is the same. Um, and then you can just click on the different points and you move them up and down. Uh, Q and A don't work, but you can hold shift to move a bit more quickly on the 2D ones. So that's just changing the um, how much cranking injector pulse width I've got based on the, uh, the coolant temperature. Um, and the same applies to most of them. You can also do grid manipulation and move the, um, the point at which that site uh, is interpolated. Uh, so that's the basics of your, 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 th your 3D and your 2D maps. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of complexity in how you set those maps up. Um, and, that, and that's really where you need knowledge about engine tuning. I, I'm not going to cover that in this video. Um, but that's obviously a pretty complex topic in itself. Um, so now I'll just move on to data logging. So um, there's a little window here that just lets you view a, a, a parameter for a section in time. So I could look at manifold pressure and uh, say engine speed. And I can just vary those parameters and I can see it in a window. So I can just monitor things. You know, if I monitor transient fueling, for example, uh, I can do that. I don't think there's any transient fueling enabled on this map, so that's not doing anything but. Um, Coolant temperature, for example, I could see that. That's not going to move very fast normally. Um, I can use up and down to zoom in and out on the time scales, so I can see over a, a sort of a wider period what the, what those different parameters are doing. This is a bit of a work in progress, so we're looking at adding more features to this, but it, it gives you some basic capability. Um, it's quite useful. So um, there's an options window here, so you can um, label all points and things like that and you can add some averaging to readings. Um, I tend to run with um, label all points off and just look at the points that I want. And using M and N, I can just change the size of this text just to get it to, to read right. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so 
that M makes it bigger and N smaller. Uh, mode, uh, we've covered that slightly already with auto select and group manipulation. Um, and now we'll just have a look on um, the view menu. Um, this is quite important because it gives you this dial system, and the dial system is the way that we view, or one of the ways that we view the different parameters from the ECU. So, for example, if I want to use air, look at the air temperature, I just add a dial and I click set dial, click air temperature, and that gives me the current value in the ECU. So we can see how that changes. Um, you can add as many dials as you want pretty much and if you drag them around on the top you can reposition them how you like. Um, you see there's a set alarm feature here so I can set for example an alarm on manifold pressure so if I set that at 1400 um, and hit set you can see it changes on the right there when I hit set uh, and then I hit enabled. Um, we've actually enabled an alarm so typically you might do this on coolant temperature for example if you're dyno mapping and you you know, you're worried about being distracted and not seeing it. Well, if I raise the manifold pressure above that, you know, you get a pretty clear, audible and uh, visual indication there's a problem with the vehicle. So, for example, it could be overheating or too lean or whatever, and you can, you can set the alarm on whatever parameter you want. So that's quite useful. Uh, you can remove all dials, so if you just want to clear it, then you can do that. Um, uh, then you've got... Um, an orthographic which we've covered already, so that's the little 2D window. Um, and then you've got ECU settings, so that's um, pretty key. So this is an important little window and it gives you various settings that the ECU uses. So the first ones are some information about the flywheel, so how many teeth it's got and where the reference tooth is, how many cylinder pairs the engine's got. So there's some really important stuff here and this is documented in our manuals. Um, where, just to note when you're basically um, modifying these settings, you need to change the value in the, in the window um, and then hit set. So once you hit set, then it will change it. In this value, in this instance, the maximum value is actually 15, so I've exceeded that. Um, so it won't let me set it higher than 15. Um, so I'm going to just set that back to zero. There's a whole host of stuff in this about the sensors and various parameters that the ECU uses. Um, but don't go messing around in here unless you know what you're doing. You know you need to know what each parameter does and what the effect is on the engine. Um, if we've given you a base map, they're probably correct. Um, it's only for more advanced tuning where you're going to want to go in and mess with those. Um, so uh, we've got an ECU summary window. So that gives us a um, an overview of the ECU and the different uh, values. So you don't have to load up a dial for every single one. Uh, you can just uh, get an overview of what's going on, that's quite useful. And um, then there's also a fault summary, so um, this will just show us the ECU is constantly um, you know, checking what it's doing and, and if it finds a problem with something it will raise a fault flag. Um, this one here, so it's, for example it's showing that we've had a power reset, so that's just showing us basically that um, the ECU is... Um, when it last reset it was because it was powered on, so that's actually a good thing. So. You can get a watchdog reset, which is if the ECU has a problem and resets itself. Um, and then there's various other sensor and map checks. So if you've got some corrupt data, you might get um, you know, a map error. So you might get a fuel air temperature compensation error. So this is it, or a boost duty error or an overboost fault. And these are all going to turn orange if that fault occurs. So if you've got a turbo and you get overboost, you're going to see that turn orange. Um, most of these are to do with um, internal data in the ECU, so then you wouldn't expect to see them unless you've, you've been messing around with a, a map and you've put in some incorrect values, but most of the time the software will stop you doing that anyway. So if you're seeing any of these, uh, most of these errors, then you know the ECU's got some significant issue going on. So just get in touch with us if you're seeing anything like that. Uh, but something like overboost, you know, you're going to get that if you've got a turbo and you've got overboost. You know, it's not an ECU problem; it's a it's a mechanical issue. So it's worth looking in there and making sure everything's green, except for maybe this power reset one here. Um, and that's pretty much it for the view. I say the dial system is really important for monitoring. You know, you can you can monitor your air fuel ratio, for example. So if you're on the dyno or on the road, you can. You monitor your air fuel ratio there for tuning and mapping. Um, and then quickly on the comms, the communications menu, so you know we're already connected here, so we're actually connected on COM4. And then there's three buttons about getting and setting the ECU memory. So 
the ECU has a RAM, which is like an, uh, a volatile memory. So um, when you're making changes on the electronic, <coughs> they're not permanent until um, you save it into the ECU. So whenever you're making changes, you really need to remember periodically to uh, set the EPROM. So it's kind of like when you're working on a Word document, you're making changes, but those changes aren't saved. Same applies here with Ultronic. So periodically, you just want to set the EPROM. Um, the other two are about the RAM and the memory of the ECU. So um, you won't typically use these, but for example, if you get disconnected, like you turn the power off to the ECU without saving it, um, it'll actually, the maps will actually be saved within 3D Tuner. So what you want to do is just make a save file of that map and then when you reconnect you can actually it'll say load ECU you can cancel that and you can actually do set EC RAM and that will that will put rather than taking what's on the ECU into the laptop that will put what's in the laptop onto the ECU so you can carry on from where you left off uh, but you do really need to be you know, periodically just doing this set EEP ROM and there's a little about menu that will just show you a few different things about the version of um, 3D Tuner, um, the ECU code version, which COM port, the fact you're getting some data from the ECU. So that's sometimes quite useful. So that's a pretty um, fast and brief explanation of 3D Tuner and what it does. Um, it's not going to teach you to be an engine tuner. Um, you have to go elsewhere for that, and we might do some videos in the future. Um, but hopefully that will be enough to get you started and, and, and to get an idea of what 3D Tuner can do. So thanks and uh, goodbye.